Dunn, who I believe will be an NXT champion. By saying that Pete Dunne will be the NXT champion in the future, Michael Cole just jinxed his momentum. You just had to say that, asshole. I am the king, and if you listen to me, we'll be just fine. This is, without a doubt, the most awkward team I have ever seen for a Survivor Series match. There's just something unusual about a big dog, a monster, an asshole king, a discount Iron Man, and someone named Shorty G to be on the same side. Also, King Corbin trying to say that he's the captain of Team SmackDown when Roman Reigns was clearly announced to be the captain. Do we have to go through with this? Also, also, Braun Strowman's I really wish I weren't here right now and regret my decision to leave Raw face. Alright, who turned out the lights? Because nobody's entrance has taken place and we're still talking with the commentators here. Lights on, please. The Fiend is clearly the Universal Champion, yet the graphic shows that it is holding the WWE Championship instead. When did it go after Brock Lesnar and win his title? Did anyone actually think Daniel Bryan stood a chance after Seth Rollins couldn't get the job done twice? And I'm taking a sin off because I initially thought a blue version of the Universal Championship would look worse than the red, but I take it back after actually seeing it. It looks far better than the red belt, honestly. Do you want to come play? Good lord, Bray Wyatt really is becoming Pennywise the Dancing Clown. I swear he could have been the perfect choice to play the role in the recent movies. I always get chills watching this. Yes. Copy, yes infringement. Survivor Series is presented by- Skip! The Fiend wearing the Universal Championship around its neck truthfully makes its entrance look a little weird. If it is not going to hold the title on its shoulder, I recommend dragging the title on the floor as it makes its way to the ring. And oh my god, there goes my background again. The Universal Champion, The Miz. Wait, what? That's The Miz? What the hell happened to him? He looks frightening and- You know what, I'm just gonna throw in five sins for this awkward confusion. Michael Cole's creepy erection for The Miz might still be intact. I know that the presence of The Fiend causes the red lights to appear, and personally, I believe that was in hell while terrifying in the arena, but considering it is on SmackDown, shouldn't the lights at least be a dark blue or something, or would The Undertaker get pissed off if that happened? Well, this blue title now looks weird since we're surrounded by red light instead of blue. Remorseless. Oh, Ow, my hands! See? Once again, I prove that even the red lights cannot stop the sinner from discovering anything. I am more powerful than you give me credit for. Not to mention, I have a fiend of my own, too. We're watching. <laughs> Is The Fiend asking Daniel if he remembers it, or is The Fiend demanding Daniel to remember it? I'm confused. Would be Daniel Bryan. That's Damn, sucks that we had a missed opportunity for The Fiend to do the Upside Down Exorcist walk. <laughs> I'll remove another sin, mainly because The Fiend is arguing with itself about whether or not it should break Daniel Bryan's neck. Shaking its head no, then yes, all while looking directly at us. <laughs> and laughing, almost laughing about it. The Fiend is almost laughing about it. Michael, it is clearly laughing. There's nothing almost to this at all. He's got to do things that he's never done before in his entire career. Even though literally everything Daniel Bryan does tonight are things he's done throughout his entire career. That might explain why he lost to The Fiend. The damn thing's back on its feet! Not even try, Michael. After everything The Fiend endured in its two matches with Seth Rollins, it's not a surprise that it is invincible. The way The Fiend kept whacking its head on the canvas after getting hit with a running knee was awesome, no doubt. Oh my god. Uh, Holy shit! The cinematic shots of The Fiend rising behind Daniel Bryan is frightening to watch, and I fucking love it. This is why The Fiend's horror gimmick works no matter how many people want to complain about it. Gotta admire the way The Fiend had Daniel's right arm trapped to prevent him from breaking out of the mandible claw. Smart strategy. Tonight, but in the end, the even the referees stick to the fact that The Fiend is a demonic monster that will kill you as soon as look at you. Thank you. On the no-holds-bar, no-disqualification match. Wait a minute, the match is literally labeled as a no-holds-bar, no-disqualification match? One of those match names has to be removed because what makes putting them together so intense? Was it just so you could shove stating the obvious sins in my face? This is a new Rey Mysterio. And by that, I mean this is the exact same Rey Mysterio that we have seen countless times before over the years and there's nothing new coming out of my moveset tonight. Also, Rey Mysterio said the exact same thing when it came to his battle with Dave Bautista coincidentally at this event 10 years ago. We ended up seeing the same Rey Mysterio who got his ass beat in less than 10 minutes. Lo and behold, deja vu happens tonight with Brock Lesnar. As I swing. Rey Mysterio is just like the Chicago Cubs, who have a good swing in him but will ultimately fail to win the major gold like he always does. Oh! Just like I mentioned in part one, it makes more sense to refer to this as a 15-man Survivor Series match, not a five-man match. Join Team Chompin. Whoever the hell Randy Orton is winking at. Listen, King Corbin is a fearless leader. Corey Graves also doesn't realize that King Corbin is not the leader of Team SmackDown either. Not surprised, given he's an asshole. He's gonna allow Roman to think that the big dog's in charge. Well, that doesn't make any sense. No one on Team NXT could be 100%. 
Well, maybe except for Walter, given he hasn't competed at any sort of capacity at NXT War Games. Though that shockingly doesn't lead well for Team NXT's advantage. These guys have seen and done. Ricochet catching Matt Riddle's flip flops, they toss him out of the ring. Man, Matt Riddle's a dick. I bet that corner to the left feels bad because it gets no respect from any of the teams tonight. And there I go, thinking ring corners have feelings. I must have been driven insane after all these years of doing Sins videos. Pinfall submission, count out disqualification. Wait a minute, isn't this a triple threat? If so, how the hell are there disqualifications and countouts? Especially if a wrestler is on the outside of the ring while the remaining two are in a pinfall on the inside. How are you supposed to do a countout and a pinfall at the same time? Makes no sense. Monster. It's oh, it's Not gonna lie, the way Braun Strowman leaped for that dropkick after stopping himself was awesome. Kicking things off in the Survivor Series match looking good. Have you oh. ever seen a strike thrown by Drew McIntyre with as little impact? Yes, many times actually. No need to go on pretending that all of Drew McIntyre's strikes have been effective since 2009. Sent on by the NXT UK. In their house. Oh. Well, that's what you get when you waste time standing around with opponents like Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman in the ring with you. Learn a lesson from this, Walter. Less posing, more wrestling. Uh, Claymore kick! What a devastating Claymore kick to the air. Ha, huh? could you imagine if a kick to the air ends up defeating Walter as a result? It is! Holy shit, it actually did? Well, that's just weak. Wasn't this guy an unstoppable force in the NXT UK division or something? Oh, well, moving on. And the arrows will- the only thing bullshit about Walter's elimination was that he fell to a Claymore kick that never connected. What the fans can't accept is that Drew eliminated him fair and square. And a fair and square elimination is not bullshit in any way. Otherwise, every fair and square victory in wrestling history is bullshit. He's staying one step ahead. Deadly powerful is Shorty G. Whoa! This series of moves from Shorty G and Ricochet is awesome, no doubt about that. The excitement continues. Shorty G. This is a delight. Whoa! The quick athleticism of Matt Riddle is also amazing the way he flipped around and prepared to lock in an ankle lock on Shorty G. Owens gonna aim for? The fact that Kevin Owens is debating about whether or not he should hit the frog splash on Shorty G or Tommaso Ciampa just adds fuel to the speculation from Seth Rollins that Kevin is possibly in league with NXT. By this point, these constant dissensions between the Survivor Series teams is getting old and boring, especially in moments where it's not necessary. Let's randomly argue instead of continuing this match and defeating our opponents. Right. Kevin Owens coming to his aid. Yep. Seeing Matt Riddle copy on Tommaso on the fast clap pose just ruins the image, to be honest. It's only cool when Tommaso does it. Now is no time to pat yourself on the back. Corey Graves will be great at CinemaSins to expansion. You hear that? It's the sound of the audience falling asleep because both Tommaso Ciampa and Randy Orton won't stop staring at each other. Seth Rollins is standing in the wrong corner. That corner is empty, man. Get back with your teammates. Legal. It's oh! to the reckoning! Whoa, counter! Yet another creative RKO Rampage. These never get old, that's for sure. Always awesome to see Randy Orton find new ways to counter moves into the RKO. Roll through. Shoulders down of Orton. No! Randy's shoulder came off the mat several times during this pinfall and the referee somehow didn't see it. You see, that is how an elimination is bullshit compared to Walter. Can you believe? It's a major thing that Matt Riddle eliminated Randy Orton. However, he's making the rookie mistake of prematurely celebrating, completely forgetting that there are many more enemies left to go. Post-elimination assault. Also, considering there are disqualification rules in this match, why wasn't the next team of Team Raw disqualified when Randy attacked Matt? Randy is eliminated, so now he qualifies as outside interference. This move should have rendered a disqualification for a Team Raw member, but the WWE is just going to forget about the rules, I suppose. And since Randy is outside interference, this triggers the elimination due to outside interference in. Get your shit together about your rules, WWE. Either disqualifications count, or they don't. Pick one, and fucking stick with it! Oh, ricochet. Braun Strowman's train wreck maneuver was fun to watch, especially the way Ricochet sold it. Ricochet sells moves very well. It's Strowman again! Braun Strowman spared Seth Rollins from getting run over once again. What are you thinking? That was a bad idea! McIntyre beat the count! This has happened so many times, it might as well be a new cliché. Biggest wrestler on a team gets eliminated via countout just to avoid getting pinned cliché. Be thankful James Ellsworth wasn't here to cause Braun to get counted out this time. Also, weird trivia from tonight in 2016. At both those events, Braun Strowman lost by getting counted out, SmackDown got the victory for the men's team, and I was in attendance at both shows. Somehow, I blame this on myself. It's a disaster is what it is! Nigel McGuinness is on Team NXT, right? Yet he's calling Braun Strowman's elimination a disaster. I would think that Nigel would be jumping for joy knowing SmackDown doesn't have Braun as an advantage for their team anymore. Corbin, boom, what a kick! Ricochet is a dick to the turnbuckle. What did that poor innocent turnbuckle ever do to him in his career? Oh. Vic Joseph's orgasm. 
Stop Ali looking to make his way back oh, in. That's it. Here's five sins. All King Corbin wants to do in this match is cause drama. I'm truthfully surprised SmackDown still managed to win this match despite the King's bullshit. Look out to Tony, two members. CM Punk chance. Get over yourselves. Did you actually believe for one second that he would be showing up at this event? How humiliating. Why would you say that? Drew McIntyre just jinxed his own momentum from bragging about kicking Tommaso back to NXT. See? Told ya. Next time, shut your mouth before you do something. Nine times out of ten, you'll get eliminated from your own ego. Brilliant move by the fearless leader. Oh, shut up, Corey. At this point, King Corbin deserves to get eliminated if all he's doing is yelling at his own teammates. This is truly unbearable. Whether or not King Corbin was being an annoying asshole throughout this match, Roman causing his own teammates elimination is a severe disadvantage and thus a really bad strategy. Baron Corbin from Team SmackDown. That's King Corbin, you asshole. It comes Keith Lee. Why isn't the referee doing anything about Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins beating down Keith Lee, who's not even the legal wrestler for Team NXT? This guy sucks at his job big time. Well, now is not the time to flex your ego. That's what I'm saying. Sorry guys, but when Dean Ambrose is nowhere to be found, attempt the Shield signature triple powerbomb is a pointless waste of valuable time. Yet another devastating kick to the air. I wonder if this one will eliminate Seth, just like the Claymore kick to the air did to Walter earlier. Probably not though. Close to two minutes of waiting for something else to happen following the elimination of Tommaso Ciampa. When a match is about 30 minutes long due to reasons like that, you know something is wrong here. Yes! Yes. Should've honestly done this a long time ago in this video. Here's an additional five cents just to cover the stare downs of this match. It's extremely irritating. Team SmackDown W.O. Good thing the referee realized his mistake because Keith Lee clearly got his right shoulder up before the three count was made. Man, if NXT lost due to poor officiating, that would've sucked big time. Powerball. I'm immediately removing five cents because Keith Lee deserves all the praise for his great performance in the final moments of the Survivor Series match. Even if he didn't win, it was tough for Roman Reigns to defeat him. Normally I find these boring, but Keith Lee deserves that show of respect following his performance. Definitely a force to be reckoned with in the future. Where's Becky Lynch? Stuck inside a Minecraft maze? The fuck? That we've had here in Chicago this Jerry Lawler hiding his red colors with his paper was funny. Hilarious since Raw lost Survivor Series for the first time since the brand split began. Also, while NXT won the overall battle, SmackDown has a personal victory tonight as well. After three consecutive years of losing to Raw, SmackDown finally beat the red brand. It may not have given them the overall victory in tonight's war, but it's a personal victory, and I see that as an absolute win. Brock Lesnar is entitled to Is this news? Victimized Mysterio son Dominic. I find it funny how Paul Heyman is praising Brock Lesnar's assault on Dominic Mysterio, but when it was actually happening, Paul was begging Brock to stop and not to hurt him anymore. At one moment when you realize that Cain Velasquez is nothing but an afterthought to this feud between Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio, that definitely escalated quickly. You attack my family? One thing I will give praise to is the way Rey Mysterio handles this personal rivalry with Brock, protective of his fallen son, and willing to do anything to destroy the beast. The build-up to this match was at least good, which the match itself was too. Joaquin Phoenix would not approve of this, and neither do I. You're no joker, Rey, and you never will be. We will all see a new Rey Mysterio. <laughs> That's funny, Vic. Lesnar's never been embarrassed before. No offense, but Vic Joseph is such an idiot. Brock Lesnar has never been embarrassed before? The dude lost to Seth Rollins while Seth was nursing messed up ribs. Never been embarrassed before my ass. No disqualification. Finally! Every time Brock Lesnar has been nearby, Rey Mysterio was always armed with a lead pipe. But now when the actual match is about to begin and there are no opportunities for sneak attacks, Rey enters this match completely unarmed. Really stupid strategy after all the times you ambushed Brock with a pipe. Rey Mysterios! Two and a half Rey Mysterios is the equivalent of 437.5 pounds. So is Paul Heyman stating that Brock Lesnar has gained massive weight and weighs in tonight at 437.5 pounds? If so, why isn't Brock kicking his ass for calling him fat? Okay, wait a minute, what's this? Go Again, why didn't Rey just have the lead pipe at the ready from the moment he entered the arena for this match? Driver right out of the oh. old state of That's strange. Rey usually flips forward and rolls through whenever he gets sent out of the ring like that. He only crashes in the second time. We can't stop this. Well, since this match hasn't been labeled as cannot be stopped for any reason, don't underestimate the referee calling the match off for stupid reasons. This is an evil individual. Wow, Jerry, you're a real Sherlock Holmes. Now tell me, did you figure that out on your own? Bravo! Brock forgot to tie his boots prior to entering the arena, the same as Ray forgot to bring the pipe to the ring with him. For a oh! onto the 
Nope, Rey Mysterio missed the pipe by that much. He's lucky all he got was a German suplex in this scenario. Sure, Ray may be down, but Brock Lesnar really shouldn't playfully hand over the pipe to him. He doesn't exactly have a good reputation with smaller opponents recently. Suplex after suplex is really irritating, especially with the extremely slow pace. I feel like I'm stuck in a Chicago traffic jam. Those things are a bitch to get through, trust me. But even they are faster than the pace of this match. Wait a minute. The fact that Dominic brings in a towel to throw just goes to show that he has little to no faith in his own father. Nearly two months ago, Brock didn't even hesitate to assault Dominic, but now that Dominic came to him, he's hesitating? Bad idea. Brock has to go Dominic! Brock's Lesnar's take quite the beating tonight. One would think that Shinsuke Nakamura was behind this. Oh. <laughs> yep. That was awesome, no doubt. It was unsuccessful in winning the WWE Championship for Rey Mysterio, but it was still awesome to see. Yes, we got a new champion! Ha, ah, your voice cracked! Also, Vic Joseph ended up jinxing the momentum of Rey Mysterio by shouting out, We got a new champion. Should have waited until the pinfall was completed. They literally showed this commercial, the WWE TLC, twice in a short period of time. The same one, too. Nothing different. I honestly don't get what was so important about having the women's champions face off in the main event of the evening. For one thing, their match isn't that good, and by this point, Raw and SmackDown are lost causes in NXT's victory. Also, normally situations like this would result in something major happening by the end of the show. But guess what? We get none of that, so this main event is not just flat, it has no major outcome from it. Bailey is just as bored from how this match is going to turn out as I am. Sorry, but I still can't take this entrance seriously when all I think about is Goldberg heading to the ring. Yeah, more on Ronda in just a moment. More on Ronda in just a moment? Are you implying that Ronda Rousey might possibly be here and will make a big impact on Becky Lynch following the conclusion of this match, setting up the hype for their epic one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania 36? Well, sadly, none of that happens tonight and would have at least made this match worth being in the main event given how poor the quality is. Right. Oh, from attacking from behind and attacking Shayna Baszler from behind is the worst mistake Bayley could make because of how dangerous Shayna is. Unity between Bailey and Becky. This is a literal representation of how sad the situation is. The build-up to Survivor Series has mostly been about Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch, while Bailey is left on the outside, and it's stupid. Yes, so she was trained by. Oh! Well, that was just sad. Bailey was the clear target, and Shayna wasn't hit by Becky's dropkick whatsoever. Championship available to women here. Oh, good lord, is Bailey trying to lose on purpose or something? That was a nasty botch into the corner. Bailey is completely stupid tonight. She attacks Shayna from behind and still expects to team up with her against Becky. Jeez, what has happened to her since the heel turn? More annoying pauses and more annoying consequences of said pauses. It's quite a shame to how this match is the main event and it was absolutely horrible. For the second, but look at this. This is I don't know if Becky's hands are taking the most punishment or the ring canvas is taking the most punishment. Either way, it's a sin. She can't be distracted or focused. Wait a second, Beth Phoenix is saying that Bailey cannot be distracted or focused? Then what the hell is she supposed to do in this match if that's the case? And there we go, ba Baszler. I've honestly lost count of how many times Shayna Baszler has been sent flying out of the ring by either Becky Lynch or Bailey. Kick right to Lynch! That was clearly a knee to Becky, not a kick. Bailey into the second rope. It's gotten to the point where even the commentators are less than interested in this match. Seriously, what is happening anymore? This is sad. Conversations during matches, as you can clearly hear Becky telling Shayna, okay, and go. A little more subtle next time. Fight out! And Bailey launched over the top! Poor Bailey. Any chance she gets, she also keeps getting thrown out of the ring. Guess we're waiting on Becky's turn for that. Up on the shoulders! Oh! That would have looked devastating had Becky been thrown onto the table from a higher distance instead of less than a foot in the air. Victorious here tonight! Oh! Post-match assault. This final sequence of Becky Lynch posing with a Raw Women's Championship is awkward considering Raw won virtually nothing during the main show of Survivor Series. 